Good morning, please, to the Word of God, and we're turning to Second Kings this morning. We're turning to the Old Testament, and we're in Second Kings chapter 6, please, the second book of Kings, and we're in chapter 6, please. Second Kings, chapter 6, down at verse 8 we read, Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of, and saved himself there not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dotham. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about and when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host come past the city, both with horses and chariots. And a servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, Open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to the reading of His own precious truth. You know, it wasn't long after I trusted Christ. It wasn't long after I became a Christian that I came to realize I faced a new enemy, that I faced a strange enemy. The reason why I'm saying a strange enemy, it was an enemy I never faced before. Not only did I come to realize that I faced a strange enemy, but I come to realize that I faced a subtle enemy, subtle and crafty and cute. But I'll tell you this, I come to realize he wasn't just a strange enemy. And he wasn't just a subtle enemy. I came to realize he was and still is a strong enemy. And you know, child of God, I come to realize very soon that in the Christian life there are many battles. In the Christian life there are many tough times, and mind you, I have had them, and still do. And many times I too have had grueling struggles that has stretched the nerve of faith almost to breaking point. 
The man that stands in a pulpit and says that Christians don't have trouble, they're not telling the truth. Or if a man stands up and he preaches the gospel and says, well, if you come to Christ, you'll never have problems. He's a liar. Because God's people, His own redeemed people, can face great, overwhelming situations and circumstances. And I am telling you, they would stretch the nerve of faith. And you know as well as I do, the nerve is a very sensitive thing, especially when you go to the dentist. I mean, one day sitting in a dentist in Barn Bridge, and she was drilling. I don't know what she hit, but she near sent me into what I thought was the third half. But the nerve is a very sensible thing, and every one of us this morning has a spiritual nerve that can and becomes easily affected. But you know, child of God, what I have learned, some of them old hymns that are in the hymn book, They've got great words, you know. They were almost inspired, if not inspired, to be written. And there are great hymns that soothes the nerve in the times of trouble. One of my favorite hymns is, What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear, what a privilege it is to carry it. Everything to God in prayer. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. It soothes the sorrows, heals the wounds, and drives away the fear. Do you know the enemy this morning always seeks to attack that nerve? And as the physical nerve sends messages to the brain, so the spiritual nerve this morning sends messages to the heart and to the mind and to the life. And it's the spiritual nerve this morning that controls our thinking, controls our living, and controls our action. The enemy's real. And oftentimes, child of God, he comes and drives us perhaps to what seems to be breaking point. And he knows how to do it. You see, this wee message that the Lord has given to me this morning, there's a wee lesson in it, and the wee lesson is this this morning. Learning to hold your nerve in difficult times. Field Marshal Montgomery said many young men during the war, their life ended, was ended, by an enemy bullet or an enemy shell. But what he says killed many of those young men in battle was they, they failed to hold their nerve. Child of God this morning, I wonder, is there someone here and the road's very rough for you at the moment? You're climbing what seems to be a hill or a mountain that seems too steep to go any further. And I wonder this morning, is there somebody and you're overwhelmed by something? Well, I want to tell you, God has a wonderful message for you. And the title that I've placed upon this message is, When Saints Are Surrounded. 
we can hold our nerve. And I want you to notice, first of all, in the passage of Holy Scripture that we have read, I want you to notice something about the Syrian king. He was, he was the enemy to the man of God. And the Syrian king was no dozer. And I want you to notice, first of all, the plan that was put in place, verse 13 and 14. And he said, Go spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he was, or he is in Dothan. Dothan. Verse 14, Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city. About. Do you know what God wants us to see in those two verses? Something that I believe we often forget. The enemy is always planning against us. And child of God this morning, life for you may be good. Life for you may be well. Life for you at this present time this morning mightn't be, couldn't be better perhaps. But you mark this this morning. The enemy is planning right now in order how to attack your faith. Right now the enemy is planning an order as to how he may attack your testimony. The enemy never ceases, child of God, never ceases in his planning to attack the child of God. First Peter 5 and 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil goeth about seeking whom he may devour. And child of God, if life's good, be careful, for he is planning to attack. Notice the setting of the plan. Go and spy where he is. The enemy was interested in his position. Do you know why the enemy was interested in his position? The enemy was interested in his position because his position would either make it difficult or make it easy for the enemy to attack. Child of God, the warning from this this morning is, where you are right now, are you leaving it easy for the enemy to attack? Or are you making it difficult? You see, the problem is this morning, child of God, Christians find themselves in places where the devil finds it easy to attack them, easy to ensnare them. Of course, I'm putting on the old security head again. During the awful days of the trouble, we often got the call that there was places that was known as out of bounds. You weren't allowed to go. Certain shops were out of bounds. Certain roads were out of bounds. Because you were leaving yourself an easy target for the enemy. And child of God this morning, the enemy is always interested where you are. And then I want you to notice the subtlety of his plan because it says, it says there in verse 14, and they came by night, they came under the cover of darkness. The enemy didn't come charging in, you know. He comes sneaking in under the cover of darkness. I wonder this morning, are you under the cloud of darkness? Mind you, the enemy can come in and sneak in when you're, under, when, when you're under the cloud of darkness of depression. The enemy comes in. Or the cloud of some difficulty that you're facing, the enemy comes in. Man, he loves to come in when you're under the cloud of darkness. The plan that was put in place. Notice, secondly, in this passage this morning, there was the multitude that was mightily mobilized. Verse 14, Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. Do you know what I see here? I see the Syrian king was determined to capture the man of God. 
I want you to know something this morning, and God wants you to know, and God wants me to know, for He's been reminding me all week. The devil is determined to defeat every believer. And I'll tell you this, what I see in that verse this morning and what God sees, the Syrian king was no small power. He had great power. In fact, the Syrian king sent the best that he had. Listen, never underestimate the enemy this morning. Paul said in Ephesians 6 and 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And child of God, never underestimate this morning the power of the devil. Speaking of Antichrist, Paul said to the church of Thessalonica, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9, even him who's coming, that's the Antichrist, who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Listen this morning. The devil doesn't do anything in half measures. And the devil, child of God, is fully set to defeat you in your life and to defeat me in my life and to defeat the whole lot of us in all of our lives. But then I notice also in verse 14, they come past the city all about, you know, leaving no way of escape. That's how the devil sets his attack up, you know leaving you with the mind that there's no hope. There's no hope this morning. The plan that was put in place. I wonder this morning, are you looking at a great multitude? Are you looking at a situation? Are you looking at a, are you looking at a circumstance this morning? Are you facing something that's about to overwhelm you? And you're saying to yourself, and there's no way out of this one. The plan that was put in place, the multitude that was mightily mobilized, did you notice, I say, did you notice the doubt that was desperately displayed? Take a wee look at verse 15, and when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth. Behold, an host come past the city, both with horses and chariots. And a servant said unto him, Alas, mas, my master, alas, my master, how shall we do? I say, child of God, how many times were like him? And many times we find ourselves in the servant's shoes. We're overwhelmed. We can't take it anymore. And he's crying out, Alas, Master, how shall we do? There's too many of them. And you know, this morning, child of God, as the servant goes out, I'm telling you, he's lost his nerve now. Many times, I wonder, is there a brother here this morning? Nobody knows about this. Now, I don't know, but God knows, and you know, and you've lost your nerve this morning. You're facing something, some situation, some circumstance has come against you and has come past you this morning. And that's all you can see. And you're like the servant of God this morning. It seems hopeless. There's nowhere to run. We're defeated. There's no way out. And this morning, your desperate sister, your desperate brother, 
All you can see is the multitude. And I can tell you this, every one of us, every one of us, not every one of you, every one of us, I'm putting myself in the same wheelbarrow. Between, the, but between us and these four walls, the whole lot of us can find ourselves there. As Paul says, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. I'm telling you, child of God, and you look around you and you see whatever you're facing and you see this thing has come against you, the enemy says you're finished. Remember that David, in Psalm 3, verse 2, In verse 1 he says, Lord, how many are they that are increased against me? In verse 2 he said this, Many there be which say to my soul, there is no help for him in God. You see, the enemy this morning seeks to rob you of every trust in God. And the enemy seeks to suck every ounce of joy, every ounce of peace, every ounce of faith from us. Because once the devil comes and robs you of your hope, that's what he loves to do. I wonder, has the devil accomplished that in your heart this morning, in your life? You don't know this morning whether you're even saved or not. Christians can get that low. And there's times I've been there, so there's many a time I wonder, should I even be a pastor anyway? Should I even be preaching anyway? And I can tell you the devil knows the hit words hurts. I'll tell you the enemy is no dozer. There's a lovely picture. There's a lovely picture in verse 16. I'm going to call this the faith that was firmly fixed. Verse 16. And he answered, Fear not. Boys, I love. I love it when people come to you in a tight corner and says, listen, fear not. And it says this here, now look what it says. They that be with us are more than that they be with them. You know, there was faith that was firmly fixed. There was something faith could see. You see, here's the problem. The eyes of faith can see what the eyes of flesh cannot see. And unless you're the man of God knew. And you know, child of God, unless you could see the invisible, the servant could only see the visible. And sometimes I think that's what was wrong with a whole lot of us. We can only see the visible. Is that all you can see this morning? Here's what God wants you to learn. This is what he taught me this week. No matter how dark the situation, the lesson God wants us to learn in that situation is this. Here it is. Learn to sense and to see the hand of God in it. No matter how hopeless it may seem to be, no matter how difficult it may seem to be, no matter, child of God, when no hope can be seen, this is what God wants you and I to learn in such time. Learn to sense and see the hand of God in it. And look at verse 17. And Elisha prayed, I'll tell you, he didn't give off to them. 
He didn't criticize them and say, where's your faith, man? No, he didn't. Too many Christians criticize. I think it would be better praying for a person who's down rather than kick them when they're down. Learn to pray for those that are in difficult times, not to talk about them or criticize them either, for we're not much of a Christian if we do. Oh, I love Elisha, says. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire about them. Oh, I'm telling you, child of God, this morning, do you see the defense that was divinely detailed? Here's another lesson God wants you to see this morning and learn. Whatever the devil, whatever the enemy plans against us, listen, God knows the plan. As the enemy, the king of Syria, was planning all this out, God knew what was going on. And you want to know something? God had his defense there before the Syrians arrived. God had them there before the Syrians arrived. And child of God, when the enemy becomes, comes to you and he comes to me in whatever shape or form, I can tell you God has his defense in place before it arrived. God has his defense here before it was arrived. If God be for us, who can be against us? Nay, we are, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Do you know, I often wondered what scriptures was Elisha leaning on? We always talk and quote that wee verse, don't we? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's not only for salvation, you know. Faith comes when we know the Word of God. And I wondered this morning, did he, did he think of Psalm 27 and 3? Though one host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise up against me, in this will I be confident. Maybe he thought of Deuteronomy 23 and 4. Let not your hearts faint, no, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight it for you against your enemies, even to save you. Listen, child of God, do you know what I need to do, and perhaps you need to do it too? We need to start feeding our faith on the Word of God. It's one thing opening the Word of God for ourselves, but we need to start opening ourselves for the Word of God. Maybe it was Psalm 34 and 7. Maybe that was it. Maybe that was the Word that gave Elisha peace and faith, not the Word. Maybe it's, maybe it's the word you need this morning. For many, many a time I leaned on it. Psalm 34 and 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth him. Many years ago, there was a mission, missionary called John Patton. He was a missionary to the New Hebrides Islands. I don't know whether he was any relation to yours, Joan, or not. I don't know. He was John Patton was his name. And there was just him and the wife, him and the wife, two of them in the, in the missionary station. When suddenly a tribe came to burn them out and to kill them. The patterns were surrounded. And every one of them had torches in their hand. And the patterns got on their knees and they started to pray. 
waiting for every moment for the enemy to strike. And stayed on their knees all night. At half six in the morning, they looked out and there wasn't sight no sign of anybody. Many years later, the chief of that tribe arrived at the station and told the patterns that he had come to Christ. And he shared with them that he was there the night when they were going to attack, but he wanted to know where the armies came from. And the pattern said, what army? There was only the two of us at Oh, no, 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 he says. Where did the armies come from? And the pattern said, there was no armies, there's just the two of us. And the chief says, ah, he says, when we were had you surrounded, he says, men in shining garments with their swords drawn appeared. And we ran. <coughs> Many months after that, the chief <coughs> met another missionary this time to inquire, to inquire of what happened on that night. And from this very chapter that God is speaking to us this morning, that missionary was able to explain to that chief that God has a greater army to defend his people than the armies of the world. And he had the joy of pointing that chief to Christ. And many, that chief, pointed many of that tribe to Christ. Thank God this morning, child of God. As I have said, thank God for the old hymns of truth that comes in tight times. And I think this one's a good one. Where it says, How oft in the conflict when pressed by the foe, I have fled to my refuge and breathed out my woe. How often when sorrow like sea billows roll, have I hidden in thee, thou rock of my soul. O oh, child of God this morning, here's the wee message now. God is greater than what you're facing. And God is greater than what you're going through. And whatever you're facing and whatever you're going through, you remember this. Greater are they that be with us than they that be with them because we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. When saints are surrounded, learn this morning to sense and to see God's hand in it all. And through that, you'll know victory. And may God bless this word, his word, to our hearts this morning for his name's sake.